political analysis of Fromm and Fuller. Al Fromm, former political advisor to President Bill Clinton, and Craig Fuller, former political advisor to both President Ronald Reagan and George H.W. Bush. Good afternoon, all. Craig, I'd like to start with you. Uh, yesterday, there was a heated debate at a uh, Senate Health Committee here in between Dr. Anthony Fauci, Joe Biden's chief medical advisor, and Republican Senators Ron Paul and Roger Marshall that frankly turned pretty ugly pretty quickly. Uh, Kansas Senator Marshall suggested that Fauci was hiding his finances to cover up possible COVID-related investments. And Paul accused him of using government resources to destroy scientists who had disagreed with him. And Fauci responded to Paul suggesting that the Kentucky Republicans' rapid criticism of him is responsible for threats against his family. I'm not sure if it gets worse than that. In any event, it reminds me how politicized the pandemic uh, has become. And my question to both of you today is, what does the GOP gain by going after such a highly regarded uh, health official? Uh, is it possible that this fits into a larger strategy uh, to make COVID an issue in the upcoming midterm election this November? And can that seriously be a, 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 a tactic? First, let me say that I first got to know uh, Dr. Fauci early on in the Reagan administration when we were going to him to learn and better understand the AIDS crisis and issue. And, and how to deal with it. And you know, my, I have enormous respect for Anthony Fauci. He has been a, um, you know, somebody for decades now who has helped us deal with all kinds of, uh, of health and, and medical issues. Uh, frankly, I think he's pretty much had it with uh, at least one one United States Senator, Rand Paul. And you know, you, you you're asking about the Republicans, but let's remember this was Rand Paul. Uh, who who decided to come to a hearing and only hoped, I'm sure, that he could mix it up with Dr. Fauci because the, the only way he was going to get the media attention that he craves is if uh, Fauci bit, if you will, and, and fired back. Um, you can argue whether it was wise to fire back, although I did watch the about eight and a half minute sequence on YouTube and, and Dr. Fauci was reasonably calm and he was definitely reasonable, uh, simply trying to point out that the things that Rand Paul uh, wanted to say were, were untrue and he knew them to be untrue. Uh, and it was, there was a back and forth until Dr. Fauci held up a, a, a copy of Rand Paul's website in which he was lit, clearly raising money uh, using the uh, fire Fauci uh, symbol and photograph and showing that you could donate, you know, five dollars, fifty dollars, a hundred dollars, thousand um, dollars. Actually, I went looking for that image today, and turns out that the website has been changed, so that you still have the opportunity to donate, but it's not tied directly to Fire Fauci, even though Fire Fauci is still on his on his website. You you have to ask yourself. Um, you know, what is Rand Paul doing? And I think the, I don't think this is as much, I, at least I hope it's not a Republican strategy as it is a Rand Paul strategy. Uh, he, he reads the polls and the polls tell him that Republicans uh, now tend to favor Fauci's retirement uh, by well over 50%. Um, nationally, Fauci's polling better. Um, but my guess is that what Rand Paul has really discovered is exactly what Dr. Fauci pointed out, is that by attacking uh, Dr. Fauci, Rand Paul reaches people who choose to make contributions to his campaign. So his, he's up for the Senate. He's frankly holds the best job he's ever had or will ever have as a United States Senator. He was an ophthalmologist who got bounced out of his first place of business, opened a practice in a small house uh, didn't like the accreditation board, so he created his own accreditation board for ophthalmologists with his family members as the board, and thus got it board certified, except that insurance companies and hospitals and others wouldn't recognize it. So this is somebody who, 
who has got a fairly uh, hard to understand past attacking one of our you know, nation's really uh, real heroes in this fight to deal with COVID. Uh, I don't think it's a Republican strategy. I think it's a, a kind of a pathetic Rand Paul strategy. Al, uh, what's your take on it? Uh, well, first of all, I think what Senators Marshall and Paul did is despicable. Uh, I do believe it's part of the strategy. I agree with Craig, it's not a party-wide strategy, but it's sort of a personal strategy on both their behalves. And it uh, undoubtedly, in my mind, won't work. Uh, so why are they pursuing it? Because attacking high profile witnesses at hearings is the way that senators get on television uh, uh, and get attention. I was a Senate, Senate staffer for a long time and one of my main goals was to get my uh, principal, my senator on the evening news. Uh, now, Senator Marshall was clearly not the sharpest tool in the shed. Uh, if, uh, as, uh, if he, he couldn't find Dr. Fauci's publicly available uh, financial records in disclosure, he, as Fauci said to a hot mic, is a moron, and uh, his staff ought to be fired. Uh, now, Senator Paul, I think, is a lot more nefarious. He wants to be president, but as Craig said, he's not going to get there. He's second fiddle in his own state because uh, Mitch McConnell is Republican leader, and he's ideologically so far out of the mainstream that he's never going to have a great legislative accomplishment. So he's embarked on a personal strategy, and for him, attacking Fauci hits the trifecta. First, it's guaranteed to get him on the evening news, get him attention, and make him a staple on cable television. Second, as Craig says, it's going to raise him a lot of money. He wasted no time after that hearing and getting out a fundraising appeal. And finally, it fires up his base. Now, if you're a perennial presidential loser, if you're the Harold Stassen of your time, you need a hardcore base that'll continue to support you no matter how badly you did in the last election. And this fires up that base. From, from Rand Paul's perspective, this is a really uh, strategy that serves him well. The problem, of course, is that there's a lot of collateral damage, and he doesn't seem to care about that. First, as Craig indicated, it puts a bullseye on uh, Dr. Fauci's back. But second and more insidious, it, it implicitly, if not explicitly, encourages the anti-vaxxers, endangering his own supporters uh, and his followers, their health and their lives, with uh, the unvaccinated 17 times more likely to be hospitalized and 20 more times likely to die from COVID than the fully vaccinated. You know, both uh, uh, senators, Marshall and Paul, are doctors. Uh, so they ought to know better uh, than what they're doing. But they seem more devoted to the Hippocratic oath than the or the, the, hip, hi, the hypocritic oath than the Hippocratic oath. Nothing like blowing your line. Um, you know, speaking of politics uh, and COVID, Craig, the other interesting thing over the last week or so has been uh, uh, President, uh, former President Donald Trump actually being far more uh, vocal about uh, taking uh, the uh, vaccine as well as the booster to the point where he was criticizing uh, the governor of Florida today for uh, not disclosing his uh, vaccination status. So it's an interesting dance that's going on. What's your take on all that? You know, I guess it's I guess it's a good thing that uh, Trump, who seems to have been all over on every side of this issue, is now settling on the the side that uh, the, you know health professionals are on, which is to get yourself vaccinated. Uh, he's taken a little heat from as you see, from his own his own crowd uh, for doing so. But I think, uh, you know, something, something's gotten to him. I, I, don't, uh, I, I don't know exactly why. I, I, I would like to just take a moment though and return to maybe the bigger issue when you, when, in terms of congressional hearings for a moment. And as, as ridiculous as these, the, the senators were as we've been, Al and I have been describing them. One of the problems that I think increasingly has occurred over the years is, you know, these, these events are called hearings. The concept being that experts are going to come and members of Congress are, are gonna actually hear what experts have to say about, about complicated, complex issues. 
but it's turned in all too often to theater. And many times uh, you, you go before Congress, I've testified, Al's testified, and, and the members are there to make their opening statements and they're there to lambast the, 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 the witnesses, but then they get up and leave. And so the experts who are supposed to be heard, in fact, sit and listen to members of Congress who are supposed to be doing the learning, explain their point of view and then leave the room. And it, it's, it's become, I think, a, a terribly frustrating exercise for anyone who has to go before the body with, uh, with, with expert knowledge on a topic who wants to share it. And I think that's in very real sense, the position Dr. Fauci finds himself in. He prepares for these hearings. He goes there to impart you know, wisdom. He, all of us have been learning about this process uh, with COVID as we've gone along. And he gets there only to find uh, this sort of hostile treatment by, uh, by elected officials who are, who are there to serve their own purpose. And somehow the, the Congress itself has to wrestle with this process because it's it's really serving no one very effectively. Uh, you know, uh, first of all, let's start with uh, uh, your uh, question about Donald Trump. And I think what uh, Trump has sort of realized is that going the course he was going, uh, it's not going to be a four-year enduring strategy. And if he wants to run for president, he's going to look pretty foolish uh, spending uh, three or four years attacking the vaccine that his administration created. But the second thing you said is really interesting. Who did he choose to attack but, but DeSantis? Now, DeSantis is the one guy who seems to be best positioned to take up the Trump mantle of the Trump crazies uh, in 2024 and runs actually second to Trump uh, and ahead of most of the field. Maybe uh, uh, the former Vice President Pence has a slight name advantage uh, right now, but DeSantis uh, uh, largely runs rest, ahead of the rest of the field for 2024. So maybe this is uh, starting to go after uh, what who, somebody he thinks is a potential adversary. What Craig said is really important about uh, the congressional hearings. Uh, you know, I remember in, uh, in 1974, 1975, when I was uh, working for Senator Muskie, we had a hearing on the, uh, uh, on the fiscal conditions uh, in the cities caused by the 74 recession. And one of the senators there was a Republican, was Bill Brock of Annapolis, late Bill Brock, who lived in Annapolis for a long time. Uh, and Bill Brock came up to me afterwards and said, you know, I never realized this, how bad these cities were hurt. So let's try to get together on this bill that Muskie had sort of thought about uh, because some experts at Brookings had talked to him about called counter cyclical revenue sharing. Well, we did that. And it came out of that hearing because our purpose for having the hearing was to get information uh, as the basis of legislation. The problem is now that these hearings aren't for a legislative purpose. Uh, most of them are for no purpose except to get attention to the uh, 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 to, to the senators who are holding them. That's why being in the majority is so important because you can be, uh, even, uh, even though now obviously it's a 50-50 Senate, but still uh, you want to be able to schedule as many hearings to benefit your, your self and your party as you can. And what uh, Ron Paul does uh, at these hearings is uh, he, he certainly isn't thinking about what legislation he's going to get by attacking Dr. Fauci. Uh, what he's thinking about is how he's going to be on the evening news. And, uh, you know, part of it is the, with cable TV and social media, there's so much amplification of the news. Uh, it used to be that you might go for, uh, uh, you know, for the AP and get, the, uh, get in the papers for a day, but now you can go forever. So people want to take it. These guys want to take advantage of it. They can build their whole career on uh, on their attacks on he in hearings. Closing up, I, I think it's important to also talk a little bit about how uh, President uh, Biden has responded to the the latest uh, variant that's come through. And I haven't seen the uh, poll numbers, but I can't imagine that 
that that these the, the new uh, wave has helped him at all. And I think a lot of people are assuming, rightly or wrongly, that uh, there could be a COVID 4.0, certainly before the, the the midterm elections. Al, you're a pro. What what do you suggest that Biden do if he's not doing it now? You know, I think the uh, piece that uh, those five Biden experts uh, who helped him uh, in the earlier, you know, it, it, as he was in the transition and through the earlier part of his administration, they came out and said it's time to sort of recast your strategy to assume it's going to be with you for with us. And, and I thought a lot of this, and I guess where I'd go is, I, you know, I basically go to a sort of an anti-smoking campaign, uh, an information campaign. I mean, those numbers of 17 times more likely to go to the hospital and 20 times more likely to be uh, to die from COVID ought to be on the air every day. And you ought to have public service announcements saying you're going to be, you ought to be vaccinated. Uh, and uh, I mean, if I were doing a policy, and I'm not a doctor, so this there may be reasons not to, but I'd say you got to get vaccinated, and if you're sick, you stay home and you get tested. I honestly don't think chasing tests is a very good strategy. Uh, it might be in a small country, but not in a big country where we're not going to do, you know, 330 million tests a day and everybody testing every day, because by the time you get your results. Uh, you know, your status may have changed. So if you're sick, and particularly if the variant seems a lot less lethal, uh, if, you're, if you're sick, you get tested. But you ought to hammer away on the danger of not getting vaccinated, sort of the way we did with smoking. And over time, that caused a lot of changes in laws. And you don't, you know, you don't see people smoking on airplanes. You don't see people smoking in restaurants. Uh, we're, we're, we have an apartment up in Beacon, New York, and uh, they sent out a notice that people were smoking in the apartment. You can't do that anymore. So that's the direction I'd go. Greg, you have the last word. As a nation, we're not real patient when we don't have, uh, you know, quick results and, and, and that sort of thing. And I think this path on COVID has been one which has just created a, a real weariness throughout the country with, um, you know, what should be done? How do we, how do we protect ourselves? Uh, I, but I totally agree with what Al is saying, and that is that the campaign has to focus on what we now know. And what we now know is getting the vaccine and getting the booster is either gonna prevent you from getting COVID or if you get it, the, the impact will be somewhat negligible. The head of uh, Center for Disease Control was uh, interviewed by ABC News, kind of an interesting story because ABC News clipped the, the interview in a way that totally confused her message. But now that they're playing the entire uh, message, uh, she was talking about recent studies that are just showing how a tiny, tiny, tiny fraction of people who have been vaccinated who get COVID become deathly ill. And so I think people just have to be reminded this should not be political. Uh, we know now so much more than we did six months ago, 12 months ago, and it would just be foolish not to, um, to, to listen and understand how to, how to cope with this. They are saying that probably it's gonna go through the population. We're all gonna get it at some point. And so having protected ourselves through uh, vaccinations is the, is the single best uh, way to, uh, to you know, stay healthy, remain healthy. And uh, I think, just think people have to do that. I, I do admire, and I think we can't fail to recognize the heroic work being done by our medical professionals around the country who are just, it's been unrelenting for two, more than two years, and that doesn't show much sign of giving up because people aren't getting vaccinated. Al Fromm, Craig Fuller, thanks so much. See you next week.